Today's episode is brought to you by Cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to Cars.com. It's magical. Hi, hello, it is Josh Bo, one of the many editors over at MavsMoneyBall.com, coming to you with another edition of Mavs Moneyball After Dark. I'm joined by Kirk Henderson. Um, he took the recap tonight, so I'm doing the hosting. I uh, feel a little bit bad for making Kirk do double duty. He hosted the Indiana podcast solo, which was kind of a soul-draining game to watch for him, and now he has to do recap pod for... Another pretty lousy Mavericks loss, this time 119-109 to the San Antonio Spurs. Mavericks do not sweep the season series against the Spurs, which I think would have been the first time in franchise history. A pretty gross second half all the way through. Uh, I think the Mavs just look, they just look like they need a break, which I don't know is great to see when you're trying to get ready for the playoffs, but they, they just kind of look like a tired, frustrated team. Uh, Kirk, immediately. I mean, I don't know. I'm not as mad as I was the other night because, you know, I, like I again, I like mentally prepared myself for the game. I'm I I prepare for a game, you know, much like I do any other part of my job, where it's like if I know what's coming, sometimes aspects of it are easier to deal with. And when I like tune in for fun on Sunday night. That loss was just such garbage. I didn't know how to process it, which is why I raged out afterwards. But tonight, this game felt I, I it felt like this was coming. I mean, let's just look at the minutes totals for the Mavericks. 38 for Porzingis and Finney Smith, 36 for Luca, 37 for Hardaway. That that's like a 90s box score. Uh guys don't play minutes like that anymore. And the Mavericks are essentially running a seven-man rotation tonight with, you know, Boban and Jackson each getting spot minutes and each being garbage. Um, and and it's it's not – it's hard to really – like, I'm really, I'm really pissed about the game, but I'm pissed for the same reasons, so it's not quite the same level of intensity. You know, Chris Epps for Zingas – is has played two straight terrible games not even like okay like terrible games and i think it's safe to to you know essentially assign the biggest responsibility for both losses on him um but at the same time i'm also having a hard time pulling back thinking okay this is a guy who is playing he's like the healthiest guy on the team like like and he's coming off, you know, a year of ACL surgery. So I don't really know. This is odd. Yeah, and I don't think it's a coincidence that he had that ankle roll, uh, what, two games ago. And he did, that was like a legit ankle roll. Like, I, I mean, maybe he just got lucky with it. You know, obviously he's playing in these games. But he has to be. That has to be feeling tender, like, or something like sore, at least, I, I would imagine. And I wonder if that's a part of it. Um, also, I feel like, at least in this game, uh, I think the Mavericks got away a little bit from what had been working for him in February. I didn't really see the consistent touches uh, that Przingis was getting, you know, in the previous, like, eight, eight, nine, ten games. You know, it was a lot of, you know, pick and roll and stand and, and three-point line while, you know, Luca did his thing. And, uh, that's the it felt like that kind of slipped back into old habits and it's really easy to slip back into old habits when you're tired and exhausted and frustrated so mm-hmm. i wonder if that all just kind of bleeds together uh, it still doesn't help that he one of eight but i really feel like Kristaps is the kind of guy at least this season he's not a productive kind of spot guy up uh, spot up guy like he he has to get touches he has to be moving around you know, give him some some touches and miss and mismatch it on the elbow. Give him some dribble handoffs. Like, I just don't think this season it's going to work out for him if he's basically a bystander in the offense aside from setting some some screens for Luca opening up his driving game, uh, which did. And you know, Luca had what thirty eight points. So, 
uh, that's just kind of how I felt. Uh, it's also hard when you get 22 minutes of Courtney Lee, who does takes one shot. Yeah. It's 22, 22 minutes playing Nick and playing a lot next to Luca, and you get one shot. Yeah, uh, that's hard to do. So, so that, yeah, that's tough. I don't know. I, I just feel like the injuries and the bumps and the bruises, it's just like they, they can't really handle the adversity, which is not like me trying to say they're soft or like some like hot take. I just, they're a team that hasn't been in this position before. A lot of these guys haven't been in this spot and they're getting frustrated and tired and they're hurt and they're shorthanded and, you know, they're just reacting negatively, which I feel like is not crazy considering their experience, but it, it sucks to watch, but it's it's not ringing any alarm bells for me at least yeah i mean there's just there's little stuff that happened throughout the game plays here and there where this is a team that is not on uh there were a couple of very odd like late sit late clock shots from delon where they would get things and then uh, luca and had to take some interesting shots you know there there's just no crispness to the game and that ended up really catching up to them. You know, you and I have a real big problem with their drop coverage on defense and how they insist on letting mid-range shots be a thing. And that mm-hmm. is what the Spurs do. So the fact that that it it this is the first time that it's caught up with the Mavericks when they play the Spurs is a little bit surprising. But I have in my game cap notes here, there's just all these instances of the Spurs going on 7-0 run, 8-0 run, whatever, and and half the shots, because I, I do very like detailed notes when I'm watching, half the shots are mid-range pull-ups. And you know, I there's just all these little factors that piled in to make one frustrating loss. Um, our fans, and I see this a lot in my mentions, a lot of Mavs fans are really fed up with Carlisle. And I just like that's putting that's putting the blame on someone whose fault it's not. Uh, he doesn't control effort. You know, Porzingis had, had, had a number of like the announcers calling him out for garbage effort. And I want to blame that on tiredness because he has played with such energy for, for big chunks of the season. I'm just, I don't know. I hate to keep focusing on him that there's just not much help coming. Um, yeah, and you talked about the mid range and their drop coverage. Well, not only did they, I mean, they didn't guard the three point line either. Like they, they dropped away, they dropped away from everyone. Like there were a lot of three pointers that the Spurs mm-hmm. uh, got a lot of clean looks. Like it's, and like I talk about how the Mavericks defense doesn't really make an opposing off. It was like the epiphany or like the this is like the apex of that take. Mm-hmm. It just felt like the Spurs just kind of ran their stuff and 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 got the shots they wanted, and they didn't really get challenged to do something that they didn't want to do very often. And I guess that you, and when that happens, hey, they shot fifty one percent from the floor and they shot forty six percent on thirty two threes. So that'll kill you. Well, you know, if there is, I don't really. There's really not much positive to take away from this game, Luca. I do want to talk about one Luca thing, which I th- thought was worthwhile. Um, his catch and shoot attempts that I feel like that was the most catch and shoot attempts he's had this season. Uh, I'm not sure if you can actually look that up in the advanced box scores when those come out tomorrow, but I'm, it's something I kind of want to look at because he was six of 13 from three. He had a couple of bad step back shots that he shouldn't have taken, but his, his willingness to just shoot was interesting. I think, uh jordan uh one of our writers said in in slack you know his shooting motion is just so slow on the catch and shoots well i think that's something for them to work on that he's taking the dang things is pretty important because like the mavericks just get open looks it's the nature of how they play so if he's willing to take a few more instead of insert that extra motion which i think is like a crutch it's like his it's almost like something a guy would do on a free throw where it's like, Oh, I need to do this extra thing to make me feel comfortable. And he just can't do that in the flow of the game. Cause his step backs, he's, he's been pretty terrible. Uh, I, I, I cackled in slack today. Um, for anybody who doesn't know this before tonight's game in clutch minutes. So the score within five points, the game within five minutes, 
Luka Doncic is shooting 18% from three-point range. Uh, yeah, that and he's shooting a lot of them. A lot. He's like second in the league in terms of per game, per clutch game minute average three-point shots. He shoots like 1.4, which is actually a lot when you think about the fact that there might be like four clutch possessions in a game. Um, and, and that's just, it's just not a good look. But, you know, the, the shot looked better tonight. I was pleased with that um we do have a kind of an interesting thing happening with what's coming next the mavericks play the nuggets on wednesday and you wouldn't know it just because no one ever talks about the nuggets on the national standings but the nuggets are in the middle of kind of their own malaise they're 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 in third place which sounds stupid like what kind of team is in a malaise but they've if you look at how they've played over the last several games They've not strung together a a win streak either since right after the All Star break. They're playing about 500 basketball. Uh, they lost to sh- they lost to the Cavs, which should be impossible, and they also lost to the Warriors, which should also be impossible. Uh, they had a real big win over the Bucks on Monday, so I think this is or uh, so I think this is is essentially a um, uh, a game that that's setting up to be a, a shocker to. Uh, on uh, whenever they whenever they play so i don't know just something to look forward to tomorrow night <laughs> yeah, and i mean yeah and I don't know, no kp though tomorrow I, I wonder if luca has to play if, if death can't play like luca probably has like you know like luca might have to play uh, yeah i think luca has to play uh, did you see, yeah did, I think it was in the third quarter the fourth quarter he had another uh, driving the lane, someone tomahawk chopped the ball and hurt, you know, dinged up his thumb and he held it again. Like for an extended period, it was, it, was, it was toward the end of the game. It was like in the fourth quarter, so I'm not sure. You might have been. Did you no, see No, I didn't see it. And, I, and yeah. I have a hard time figuring out what he's selling versus what hurts um, because <laughs> sometimes after he sells it, he just goes back to looking normal. I, I have to yeah. believe that it bothers him, but I think they actually have a, a a a bit of like he has something on his hand. I could be wrong there, though. Yeah, he does. He's wearing protective stuff, but like I'm just thinking, you know, I know we're winding down because there's really not much else. You know, this was kind of a blueprint. You know, the Mavericks have lost a lot of games left in the game tonight. Um, like it, it's not crazy for him. Like it's crazy in the sense that it's not normal. Like this wouldn't happen. Uh, but like, really, the more I think about it, if he sat for the next seven days, would anything really change about the Mavericks' current predicament? No, like, I just think they they're pro- worried. I really think they don't want yeah. to play the Clippers. That has to be it. And I think if they fall any further down, they're just going to have to consider it. But they're yeah, because there's, I mean, they're seventh right now, and they're like what five or six games up on the eighth seed with. Yeah, they're uh, fine there. Yeah, yeah. I guess you know there's. Sixth and fifth. So I, I get it. But I just, they keep losing these games though, and they keep staying in seventh. So I'm like, man, if they're just going to keep doing this, why don't they try to get Luca right? So uncomfortable in the playoffs. But I mean, you would have to, you know, beat Luca with a tire iron to get him to sit out games when he thinks he can play right now. So, uh, yeah. Like, I don't blame it. It's just one of those things I keep thinking about every time he holds his thumb. And I'm just like, man, like, what if they just, I don't know, what if they just sat him? Like, the, the team just looks like it's running on fumes right now. Well, if they lose Ready tomorrow to night, to they may have to, because they're two games behind yeah. the Rockets at this point, two games behind the Thunder. And if they lose tomorrow night, they're going to be three games back with, like, 15 remaining. And yeah. I don't know. They really might have to consider doing that. Yeah, well, we'll see. So they will be back tomorrow. That's another road game, I believe. I don't have the schedule up right now. It Sorry. is a road. It is a road game against. Uh, so that's, uh, yeah, that's uh, Mountain Time. Mountain Time Zone, Kirk. Is it a road game? I'm re- man. We're really professional. Apologies, everyone. Uh, no, it's it's at it's in Dallas. It's a ner- it's a oh, seven okay, p.m. game mind. Central Time, which is nice. Uh, but oh, they so you know, you Mavericks. Go. That's good for mm-hmm. you a little bit. Yeah, that uh, works well, for me. Well, why don't we say we get out of here? I don't know. Is there anything else you want to talk about for this game? I'm kind of out of. No, nah, I am too. Words. I am too. Yeah. Well, read the recap on the uh, post before you hopped on here. Uh, we will, at least one of us will be back tomorrow night against Denver. Probably likely both of us. I'm not doing anything tomorrow. 
Um, <laughs> I'll try to get something. <laughs> I know. I'll try to get something up this week. I, I wanted to write something like I've had this really positive column idea in my head, and it's kind of about KP. And these last two games have really kind of f me over on it. But I should probably just write it anyway. But oh, we uh, need to tease. Thinking about what, who we need to tease is Lauren Gunn. You know, one of our staff oh, writers. Yeah, yeah. Who we post? She wrote a KP column like five days ago that we held and asked to repost because we just didn't get to it. And since we posted the column, that's when KP is playing like crap. So I think we we all got to tease her. It's her fault. That's you know that's the way this works, right? <laughs> that's like when I used to my dirt curse. Remember a couple years ago? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was bad. Uh, so oh, hopefully well. Lauren has not procured the curse that I maybe passed down upon her somehow. But hopefully not. Let's get out of here. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow night, Wednesday night, uh, against Denver. Again, Mavericks lose to the Spurs uh, two games in a row. They've lost. They're going to try to avoid their first three-game losing streak tomorrow, and we will talk about it. This is Josh and Kirk. Uh, as Moneyball After Dark, we'll talk to you later.